I'm back on Wolf Hall, would you believe it? And I decided to reattack that staircase that I made by hand and pretty much detested. So I pitched it into my husband's fire, but only after taking some measurements from it and rebuilding it in light burn and cutting it with my laser. And I also added the separation wall between the vestibule and the great hall. So here it is, it's not perfect, I hurried it because it isn't a commercial kit, so I don't have to be too precise and I can fix things. So this is what it is so far. So that was it for that day. Then the next day I decided to stain it, and at least the stairs, I don't want to stain everything else, it's too dark, um, but just the stairs. And I added, because I'm impatient, some trim made with some hardwood veneer, which I think turned out lovely. But I don't want everything to be dark and gloomy, so here is the fireplace that I added on. This is the vestibule fireplace, one of two, and that are will be part of this unit right here. But again, as I was saying, I don't want everything to be dark stained that you can't see details. So I will be adding more Regency-esque colors to the walls and whatnot. But look how cool it looks in the house. It definitely is an imposing unit. It's only the one side, but uh, we'll get to the other side. I think it looks great. I'm really excited and uh, I am looking forward to painting and finishing all of these rooms. And I intend to do as much as possible until I put the second floor on because I don't want to be messing around with this with the second floor and closing it. So this right here is a little fire screen that I got from Arjen Spinhoven and they are on Etsy and they have some gorgeous little kits. But this is what I really wanted to show you, and that is the second fireplace on this central piece. It is going to go onto the back side of this unit into the other room, which is the great room. It's where the little two steps are leading, and it will be on the back wall sharing this fireplace flue. Now I'm going to turn this around so you can see. And if you see that pencil line, that's where the fireplace is going to be sitting. It's going to be about an inch and a quarter higher than the floor of the vestibule and there's a reason for that. So here's another one of those kits from Adi and Spinhoven and it's for a little log holder, absolutely gorgeous, but here you can see I have attached the fireplace hovering over the floor. Oh yeah, this is the seller on Etsy so you get the spelling right. So yeah, anyway, so everything's all, I started painting, I started painting the fireplaces and now I am adding some paneling or the illusion of paneling onto the walls. And I really did, I was kind of on the fence of whether I wanted to panel or not. I thought maybe I could, you know, just make it look like smooth plaster or something. But I figured, you know what, if I'm going to paint it, I can still keep that gothic appearance by having the paneling, like making it look like it was stained during the Tudor era and then the Regency rolled around and they're like, oh, this is too dark and too gloomy, so let's put some lovely paints on it. So here I am adding some little popsicle sticks. You can get those at the craft store in bags of about 100 or so, and they're really useful. They're a quarter inch, and they are 1 16th thick, I think, and uh, they just make a lot of, they, you can do a variety of things with it. So I recommend you get those just to have on hand for any type of little projecty things, picture frames, that sort of stuff, even flooring, if you really want to be, um, do something tedious, <laughs> you can use those for flooring. All right, so we're adding some more details in there, and now I'm putting the trim on the back side of the little archway door into the great room. There you go. So you can see we have the upper S, upper flight of the stairs going up to the second floor and it's going to be exposed to the great room so when you're climbing the stairs you can know what people are doing so yes why is the floor elevated in this in the uh, great room number one just to keep it cool and kind of wild and gothic but also because I need to have a place to hide my 12 volt electrical system and so I am going to put it under the floor um, I'm waiting on a couple of flickering fireplace units to put the little flickering um, bulbs, LED bulbs to put in these fireplaces. So I'm trying not to move too forward with them right now um, because I'm going to have to install wiring and 
you don't want to pull stuff out you know again once you do it so I'm not installing anything permanently I'm just making prepping everything and getting them ready and I need to make little log setups too for those bulbs so I painted this color onto the great room wall it was super bright um, I wasn't happy with how bright it is it doesn't look that bright in the bottle but it was pretty bright so um, yeah I wasn't too keen on it but then I was like hmm I put some highlights on things and then I thought I would want to paint this room a little bit of a kind of a dusty blue so I took some sky blue and I threw some uh, black 3.0 into it and just a little bit of the iron paint that I use for everything else and it kind of gave it a shabby look I didn't and I knocked down the brightness of the green here and I think it looks a lot better so it will definitely keep that gothic feel and not be too bright and cheery <laughs> for a gothic house but still have that modernized Tudor look to it I think but that is what I have so far for this unit now we're gonna move on to the kitchen and this here is the stove that I built for the kitchen and it is very early 1800s maybe late 1700s it's hard to get the right information from it I'm not really going for period correct but I still kind of want to at least try to be period correct in some ways so I uh, I found the original picture online and I basically modeled this after an actual stove so here's the fire grate the little ash drawer is underneath this is a rotisserie that doesn't turn because of my bad design but this is the original that I based it on and uh, and this is what I've got so it looks really cute it definitely has a very antique feel to it and then once I add in the paint and the texturing it makes all the difference I'm really pleased with the details here's the ashtray and above that is a little the grill where you build your fire pretty cute I used this sophisticated finishes iron metallic surfacer I've been using it for years definitely use it it's magnetic too so next up is the sink vastly period incorrect no such thing as drained sinks I don't think in the Georgian or Regency period but at this case in this case I'm, I'm gonna give myself a pass because the kitchen is small I suppose I could put a work table in there and maybe a a bucket with you know I don't know a pitcher but I don't know I just want it to be integrated and it's a small kitchen and I want to economize the space and have storage for all of the little things I want to collect in there so it doesn't have to be Regency perfect in the kitchen um, I'm giving myself that kind of grace so this is the little water pump that I built and this is what it looks like I cut the exterior wall and literally built the whole built-in onto the exterior wall and I am going to try and finish all of the details before I install it into the house because if once it's in it's such a small space it will be impossible to do anything once it's in so I'm going to try and finish everything on this kitchen and it will be enclosed and that will be that but lots of shelves see look how tiny and narrow that space is most of it won't even be visible <laughs> unless you like you know look in the window but I still want it to be nice but that's where I am today on Wolf Hall I'm having fun